we have a recording of this? Yeah, uh, this time it is going to be recorded. Plus, we are streaming it live on YouTube. So even if we fail to record, uh, YouTube is going to capture everything, right? But we are recording. So uh, we have officially started. Sheila, please go ahead, take it from here, and uh, I'll come back in when we are almost done. Thank you. All right, uh, Sheila, I think you are muted. Start it again. It looks like every time I'm on, there is a technical issue. <laughs> Um, can you hear me, Dr. Edu? I cannot hear you. You're muted. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, go ahead. Oh, Shana. awesome. I think the recording stopped too. So if you want to check to make sure it's recording. Yeah, I just started. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody, um, for being here tonight. I think we've always said it that it's Friday. You could be every, anywhere and you're here. So um, it's an improvement to your life, I believe. And this time will not be wasted. Thank you for being here. And hi, Michael. <laughs> you and I will be talking in the back after this with all this money. <laughs> so um, today we have Michael. Um, Michael, please introduce yourself to everyone and then we can get started. Yeah, hello, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. So I'm Michael and uh, Michael Yabua. I'm originally from Ghana, and uh, I was a past present, and uh, you know, I'm still going to be a future uh, student of Arithmes. I'm, I'm part of the Arithmes family, and as the, uh, Dr. Edu said earlier, I did join uh, Arithmes last year, April, and then went through, you know, all the process, and, uh, you know, as you guys can see on the flyer, I was able to land my, my dream job first, and then I was able to land my second dream job as well, so, you know, so I'm ready, you know, to walk you guys through the process and hopefully you know we can get everybody on this call to where you know we all want to be so you know that's that's my motive and that's why you know i'm here this evening where i am you know talking to you guys so i'm here I've, uh you know i'm available for any questions and you know whatever you guys want to throw at me just feel free you know ask your questions directly and also indirectly and i'm also going to leave my contact you know so you guys can reach out to me in case you guys you know need any any guidance or you know anything or any help with anything you guys are going through uh, related to you know cybersecurity. So you know, so I'm here and uh, just feel free to reach out you know on the call and after the call as well. So and that's that's all I have for now. Thank you, thank you, Michael. So today uh, we're going to have Michael walk us through uh, how he landed his uh, cybersecurity job or how he switched from what he used to be to where he is now, and then some, and then the second one. So uh, Michael, you will have a few extra questions, but uh, that is the goal today. Uh, thank you again for um, doing this. Uh, it's an opportunity for people here. This is the only platform that there's so many people in the line uh, that have um, gotten a job. So I'm sure you are in the right place if you are pursuing this. So Michael, uh, we, real quick, if you can tell us what um, what did you used to do before uh, you became a cybersecurity professional? Yeah, so well, I moved to the US as an international student. So my actually, uh, my degree was, my first degree was actually in biology. So after my first degree, you know, I was planning to uh, to actually go to pharmacy school. So that was the plan, go to pharmacy school. But then within, you know, finishing up my first degree and then applying for pharmacy school, I was working in the meantime, you know, as a, as a behavioral, you know, health uh, professional. So when it came time to, you know, uh, you know, go ahead and, and uh, then apply for pharmacy school, I was thinking about, you know, the options I had out there. So with pharmacy, yeah, you probably, you know, end up making more, more or less uh, as like a, a cybersecurity professional. 
So talking, speaking to my wife, my wife actually came uh, came up with the idea, you know, about you know joining, uh, you know, uh, the cybersecurity field, and I wasn't actually sure about it because you know by profession or by training, I've always been a science guy, so you know I was always going towards the medical field, so pharmacy. But then by talking to my wife, I started exploring cybersecurity, and I was looking at the pay, and I was like, okay, you know, it's, it was more flexible. Number one, it was more flexible, and the pay was there. So like basically, like pharmacists, you end up making more or less. The same thing as a uh, cybersecurity professional makes, you know, at least from what you know I'm currently I'm currently making. So I assess that, and also you know the fact that you get to work from home, so getting to work from home as well was one factor. So you know having that flexibility. So you know talking to my wife was like, you know, I, mean, I think you you are right. So let me you know let me take you up on uh, you know on this on this idea. So I started exploring, looking for classes, and then that's when you know uh, arithmetic actually just popped up on my. On my Facebook feed, so I I wasn't even you know looking for arithmetic, but it just happened to pop up. So you know, and then I saw it uh, it was being run by uh, Dr. Du. So you know, went online. Uh, you know, as Sheila says, Dr. Du has more, probably one of the person with most background checks. You know, on him. So I just went ahead and you know did my own background check with Dr. Du to see if this guy is really legit, if he's real, right? Because sometimes, as Dr. Du said, there's a, there are a lot of people out there you know selling smoke, right? So I did my background and. and uh, Looked at his, you know, his past experiences, and uh, I thought I said to myself, I think this is, you know, the right class. This is the right class for me. So I actually, you know, got on a call with Doctor Du, and uh, you know, on, the, on our first call, I mean, it it was crazy because I told Doctor Du, Doctor Du, you know, I'm willing to get into the class, but I need to start working in less than five months, right? And uh, Doctor Du looked at me like, you know, like I was crazy, probably, you know. And I know he wanted to laugh, but he didn't laugh at my face, but he probably laughed, you know within him. So right. I told the kid, and I'm, I'm sure he was like, you know, you don't have any, you don't have any experience and you're coming into this field and you, you are talking about, you know, trying to get a work in five months, but you know, with his help and uh, hard work, you know, it was, uh, I was able to make it happen. So as Dr. Du said earlier, I did join Arrhythmus last year, April. And I think uh, by the, by the middle of September, I was working. So yeah, so more or less, it was about five months to start my journey. And I came in with no prior, prior experience. So as I said earlier, my background was all in science, but nothing related to IT. So I didn't have any IT background. I mean, the only thing I knew about IT is, you know, just going online and, you know, doing the normal the normal online stuff. But I didn't have no background in IT and no background in cyber security before joining. My goodness, Ari Michael, you're touching all the questions. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Slow down your horse. All right. You have a smart woman. Uh, I, I must tell you that. Your wife. Um, Absolutely. Must, yeah. Yes. So uh, that's it. Um, Good job to her. Um, why did you decide to switch? I know you've touched you've touched on a few things, but why did you actually decide that okay, I'm going to do this? Yeah, so I was looking at three things, right? So number one, uh, the, the most important thing for me was the flexibility, not even the money in per se, right? Having to you know being able to work from home or even on a hybrid schedule. Having you know the, the chance to spend time with my with the family, you know, because uh within COVID, my son actually came within COVID. So it was really, you know, really nice having to you know, spend time with him. So my number one thing I was looking for was the flexibility. The second was the money, and uh, you know, and uh, the third was uh, was career. And I felt like cybersecurity was the area where I could achieve all these three goals. So that's why I went straight into cyber uh, into into cybersecurity. Right. And uh, you know, and yes, indeed, you know, after this, let's say this one year, I've actually you know been able to to move up. So I started as a as a GRC specialist, and then my other job, I'm a senior, you know, information. Security analyst nice. now. So I said, and then the career path is also there. So I was more over in a year. Wonderful. So it's, it's That's possible. amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so tell us. I know you you're saying um, you're touching some parts, but I want you to tell us a little bit into detail. Um, like walk us through how you actually started the process of switching the career uh, from um, your previous job to where you are now. Like. How did you um, do the transition? What what was the process when you started? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It wasn't an easy process. You know, coming from from uh, uh, coming from a background that's not uh, remotely related to IT or cybersecurity. I mean, I had my I had my struggles. But you know, as I said earlier, 
I told her, I had, you know, told her to do, I want to do this in five months. So I actually went ahead and okay. signed up for the entry level course. And by talking to Dr. Lee, he told me the entry level course actually came with uh, an internship as well. So it came with an internship and then the job, uh, the job placement assistance. So number one, uh, the, you know, the entry level course actually gave me the fundamentals and the basis, you know, to be able to stand on my legs. And then the internship actually was, was the game changer. So between the internship, I actually, you know, got to do like real hands-on uh, cybersecurity in an industry work. And that's where I gained some experience for the first, you know, for the first job. And then also the job placement assistance, that's when Dr. Duno helped me through the interview process. So whenever I get an interview, I reach out to Dr. Du and Dr. Du will help me, you know, prepare for the interview and at least, you know, put me on the right path to be able to do well on the interview. So, uh, so number one, you know, I signed up for the entry level course. Number two, go through the internship. And the number three, uh, went through the job placement assistance. And then number four, apply all the knowledge and the basis and the fundamentals that was provided, you know, to me by Dr. Du and Eric Miss. Okay. That that that's 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 perfect. Yeah, the, all the time when we start when we finish this, uh, people will sometimes will have questions like, "How did you actually? Did, which class did you take?" So now, guys, you see how, how he started. He took the entry level course first. He did the internship, which is part of the process, and then after that, you do the job placement, which shows you uh, gives you details of where you can apply, how you put your resume together and all the processes that you're going to be using to go through the um, application process. So that's good. All right, so you didn't have any cybersecurity knowledge, any background nope. in terms zero. of IT. Zero. When I zero. tell you it's zero, it's zero. Right. No. <laughs> so when you, um, when you decided that you want to do this, there's so many cybersecurity uh, boot camp training now. A lot of um, colleges, universities are offering it now. How did you decide, or how? What was your research? How did you do your research? How did you decide that um, this is where you need to um, take your class to be able to get uh, achieve your goal? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, so I I would challenge everybody to uh, you know to be able to find a course that provides you with an hands-on internship. Like you know, there's that that was a game changer for me. So when I saw it, I read Miss offered you know that option. That's the internship because at the end of the day, when you want to go to when you go to interviews, I mean the hiring managers don't really care about the theory. You know, you can know what uh, you know what an encryption is, what you know a risk management is. In Company. What can you do for us to move us ahead, right, in the cyber in the cyber world? So basically, I was just comparing courses, and then Arithmetic had this internship and the job placement assistance. Most courses, once you are done, you're on your own, right? You finish the course, that's it. You can you can come back to that to the uh, instructor, whoever it is, to be to help you know navigate the the industry, right? But Doctor Do actually was uh, uh, from what I read, uh, and also after talking to Doctor Do. Dr. Du assured me, you know, so you're going to get through the, uh, the entry level course, you're going to get you through the internship, and then you're going to have the job placement assistant. And then truly, all these three steps uh, were, was met by, you know, by arrangement. So basically, if you compare all the courses out there, none of the courses offers you an internship, and none of them offers you uh, a job placement assistant. So basically, job placement assistance, arrangement is going to actually hold your hands and walk you through the process till you land your first job. And trust me, no other course out there does that. That's true. That you hit it. You hit it. That's that's true. Um, so you you I'm so I'm still hammering this a little bit. You don't have any um, cybersecurity background, so it's like not speaking French, and then you are given a French book uh, to read. Uh, this is how the curriculum is provided. For me, that's how it's going to look like. To me, when you look at Dr. Du's curriculum, it's going to be like you're reading French when you when you when you don't have any IT background. That's what most people would think, but it's not like that. So, without your IT background, looking at the curriculum when you um, talk to him, saw the plan and all the classes that you're going to be taking. How how were you? What were the key things that influenced your uh, decision to choose Arithmetic? Yeah, so I mean, if you are taking a course, right, you have to know the background of the person teaching the course. So from Dr. Du's background, 
Dr. Edu have you know, taught at uh, various universities and he had you know, experience in the army. He was an army captain, so basically he was a leader, right? So okay. if you want to take a course and you take a course under those circumstances, the person leading the course knows how you know to take you from a, from zero. Like let's say you know teaching a baby how to walk, right? So mm -hmm. the way Dr. Do have the course structured is going to take you you know from zero to hundred. So basically, just basically teaching you from how to walk, how to crawl, how to stand, and then how to run, right? So the, yeah. the way the course is structured, it takes you to a process. So it's going to be a, a step by step process. It's not like a process where you just jump in you know, or maybe like some courses out there. They'll just take you straight away, uh, you know, through risk management or, or through RMF, right? But after you do, we start from, you know, the basis of cybersecurity. So even just the basis, just understanding how, you know, just on off a computer, how the computer works. So basically taking you through the learning process from like a zero knowledge base position to a position where you can function on your own when you land your first cybersecurity job. So you always have to look at the person you are taking the course with, understand their background, and that actually is going to help you. It's going to help guide you, make your decision. So in, in my case, I saw his background. He's, he's been a professor for a lot of years. And I was like, okay, I guess this this guy, right? This I, I said guy then, but I know he's a doctor. So this doctor is basically the right person, you know, to take the course with. Because the way this course is going to be structured, he taught before, he knows how to teach, and he's going to structure it in a way where it's going to take you from zero to where you know you want to, where, wherever you want to get to. That's true. That 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 that's that's amazing. His teaching, uh, um, his patient, and the way he teaches, I think he can even teach like um, preschoolers and and all that. Because sometimes we ask some questions, and I'm expecting him to be upset. But <laughs> it's yeah, interesting. also let me let me add to this. I mean, you know, and and what I'm saying, you don't have to, uh, you know, sign up for a paid course before you can verify all I'm saying. You can just go on the website. The, uh, I think for like the, the uh, entry level course, they have like a free yeah. cybersecurity entry level course. So you can play those videos and listen to like, it's it's free. So you just play those and compare the teachings, like the tempo, how it speaks, and then compare it to maybe other classes you've taken in other places and see the differences, right? So it's not, you know, it's not just talking to how people sign up for things. Just go on the website and just play some of the free teachings he has over there and you can compare it to like, you know, the other classes out there and then make your own, you know, informed decision. Great, great. Um, timeline. So we've talked to several people. Uh, some took like uh, a year, some took like uh, six months, some took like, interestingly, last week, to my surprise, somebody did it in two weeks. Okay, so what was your process? How long what was your timeline? Uh, milestone. How did you structure this? I know you were talking about some five months, but how long did it take you actually uh, completing the, um, the class itself and then probably the internship? And yeah, the, the class you... took me exactly four weeks to get through, four weeks. Huh? So, yeah, so I was, I mean, that's how bad I wanted it. I mean, so <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, I was like studying day and night, day and night, yeah. And I was working, you know, in a hospital facility, so... I was working night shift, and I, uh, in like in that span, that four week span, the pro the most I slept probably was like two hours a day. Like I was working at night, and whilst I was I was, I was at work, I was you know going through the course materials, and I'll come home, and then that's what I was I would probably like sleep like for like two hours most, and then wake up and then going through the materials. Like that's how bad I want I wanted it. So yeah, so it took me four weeks to get through the course itself. So four weeks to get through the course. And then I joined the internship and the internship took about two months. And then I actually landed my first job before we finished the internship. So, wow. yeah, so everything five, five months. So four months, four weeks for the entry level course, two months for the internship. And then, uh, yeah, so. Wow, that, that's amazing. You didn't quit your job. You didn't. Um, Absolutely not. Yes, so how did you combine your work you slept only two hours. How about your family? I'm sure you, yeah, have, it was tough. you have family. It was, How did you combine that? Yeah, it was tough. And when I started the course, my son was just like a few months old. So, and that was like during COVID. So it was, yeah, and it was just me, my, myself, my wife, and then my son. So, you know, it was a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on her. But then she kept pushing me, you know, because she knew, you know, what, what light I had. So even though, you know, sometimes it was so hard, 
I, not that I wanted to give up, I was tired. She kept, you know, pushing me and telling me, you know, just, just go ahead and get it done. So, I mean, you know, major props to her because she was basically handling, you know, our son and I couldn't really help her that much because I was so focused, you know, and she was pushing me to do it too as well. And it finally paid off for us. So, you know, so I, I would have been able to do it without her. So, you know, so major props to her, that's for sure. So Wow. I hope she's hearing this. That's amazing. <laughs> good job, though. Yes, good job. Um, how will you, um, what do you think about? I'm going to go tell her that she has blown the cover. I missed the question. Uh, it's not supposed to, we're not supposed to be taking questions now. Yeah, please. Yes. Please take questions. We yes. have so many questions for Mike. Good evening, <laughs> Buddy. Good evening, John. Yeah, that's <laughs> we will be patient. We will. This is this... <laughs> sorry. We will. We'll take questions. Uh uh um Jean. Sorry. Um so Michael. Yes. Um how did you how did you land the job itself in terms of your interview process how what was the how how did you how did you land the job if you can yeah work. and as yeah and as i was saying earlier you know the the internship the internship actually from arrhythmics was the game changer for me right so i mean and uh you know and uh i did a lot of interviews so first of all like and that's what i'll tell most people like you know don't don't just give up after a couple of interviews like i mean uh no it's something you have to get used to, right? So most times you do, you apply for jobs and uh, they'll tell you to go with somebody else. You know, don't just, you know, fall back on yourself. Just pick yourself up and, uh, you know, and then and keep pushing for it. So it wasn't easy. So my couple of interviews, it was a mess. And it was, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was normal. You know, it was my first interviews. I just switched from a different, a totally different field. So I had to like, you know, get my feet wet. I was getting used to it. And within the process, Dr. Du was, you know, helping me and holding my hands, by holding my hands through the process. So, and to get a job itself, as I said earlier, the internship was a game changer. So basically at the interview, they actually, you know, just asked me to speak about my, my experiences, right? So I just started from, you know, speaking from what we had done in the internship from like week one. So week one, auditing, you know, risk register, third party risk management policies. So, and they were just, you know, just looking at me and, you know, just nodding, nodding. So I was just walking them through all the things I did. And, uh, you know, after the interview, the day after they called me and they told me, you know, they wanted me to join, to join their team. So, you know, and you can imagine how I was, you know, running and I wanted, I wanted to yell, you know, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was amazing. It was amazing. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, Will you say that um, the training that you got at Arrhythmics fully prepared you for this um, for, for this career change, or did you get some knowledge from somewhere? Uh, did you combine something to this training that you got, or it was just strictly all the information that you got from Arrhythmics, all the training that you got? That is what has gotten you here. So it's strictly all what I got from arrangements that had, you know, gotten me to where, where I am now. So like for, let me just, you know, give a practical example. So that way it doesn't look like I'm giving just stories, right? So okay. in the internship, we did risk management, right? And for my company, I'm in charge of risk management, right? So arrangements basically, so Dr. Do is going to walk you through, uh, you know, all these uh, steps. And uh, you don't have to expect Dr. Do to, you know, do a whole work, a lot of work in, in a two months span, right? So it's gonna get you like it's gonna get your feet wet. So it's not gonna it's, you're gonna do the work, but it's not gonna be like you know uh, I don't even know how probably the best way to put it. Like it's just probably gonna touch on like the most important roles like for as, uh, an information security professional, right? So from the internship, I did risk management, and for my company, as I said earlier, I'm in charge of risk management, right? From the internship, I did policy. So we, we actually did draft updates and create uh, basically write new policies. And from my company, I'm in charge of our, of our policies and also, you know, compliance. So uh, basically for my company, I'm actually in charge of our SOX uh, compliance, which is the seven Oxley. And we actually, you know, uh, review some of the frameworks out there during the internship. And also for my company, investigate security violations. 
that's something I do. And that's, those are some of the skills I picked up from the internship, security awareness, training. I mean, it's a lot of things. So I just want to give some practical examples of the things you are going to do in the internship that's going to carry on, you know, to the, to your workplace. So basically, yes, the internship actually, you know, did actually prepare me for the, both the entry level courses gave me the basis and the fundamentals, right? To be able mm -hmm. to, you know, to speak to some of the materials, but then the internship is what actually prepared me for the work, for the workplace. So actually, yes, everything strictly arithmetic did prepare me for the, for the job I currently hold. Amazing. That's, that's interesting. So um, you were, when you were answering this, you were walking into the next question that I was going to be asking. Um, now you are a cybersecurity professional. What do you do at your job? How do you start your day? Walk us through that process in a day or probably depending on what you do. Sometimes in a day might be just checking emails here and there, but it depends. So just give us, give us an idea of what you do. Yeah, so I actually work, work from home. Both, profi, uh, both pro, pro positions are remotely, right? Are remote, so I, I work remotely from home. So, you know, so, okay, let me just go with, you know, my, my first job. So just give a, a particular example. So, yeah, so in the morning, you know, just turn on my, my computer. And mind you, so my, my job, we really don't have a schedule, right? So it's like, it's more project-based. So you have the assignment, you know, you just get it done. So sometimes, let's say, the, my work in a day, I can get done in two hours. And then it's up to me if I want to, like, you know, catch up or maybe recover on some other things I want to do for the job. Or if I want to just, you know, just go out and walk, that's that's up to me. So in the morning, I'll, you know, get on my laptop and then just look at normally meetings. So for cyber security professionals, uh, we have a lot of, well, it depends, but like, Meetings are you know one big one big aspect of uh, of our daily job. So I'll look at the meetings I have for the day, and based on those meetings, you know I'll basically uh, work my my work schedule around those uh, those meetings. So some days it might be like after like, I have a third party risk management, so I have to reach out to like a an onboarding uh, vendor. So it might be just for that. So and then the rest of the day is just going to be meetings. So the priority actually is the meetings because those meetings. Uh, schedule so you can miss the meetings, right? But like the other things, you can you can schedule it around the meetings. So like sometimes I have to like learn security awareness trainings to our users or our employees. So sometimes I have to do that. So it depends. So some days, yeah. So just get on my computer, look 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 at my meetings, and based on the meetings I have, I'll just you know model my my working schedule around those meetings. So it it varies day to day. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, what are some of the skills? So going to start this, this career, um, there's so many experiences that you need to be able to start it. And there's so many that you might lack, but if you do have some, some experiences able to carry you um, through that you can go far before you actually build the other experiences that you are lacking. So what are some of the non-technical skills that, um, that has helped you um i mean like what but you think that doing this particular job has been able to help you through where uh to get to where you are now so yeah well, so what yeah so i think what the technical i would say is patience you know it takes a lot of patience in this in this industry yeah because you know sometimes the way you take security uh seriously because i mean that's that's your job, right? And that's what you know your job depends on. So sometimes the way you take it, the how you take it seriously, that's not the way maybe somebody from HR or somebody from the finance department takes it, right? So sometimes mm -hmm. you have to know how to talk to people and how to approach people, right? So basically, you know, sharpening your people skills. So a lot of patience. So I would say, yeah. So patience is probably one of the, you know, one of the qualities or one of the, yeah, one of the qualities basically you have to, you know. That's, that that actually helped me, you know, be able to, you know, not go insane, and you know, so I would say patience. It takes a lot of patience in this in this field because security, you know, it's it's critical, and the criticality we we in the field or the professionals know how critical it is. But the way we we know it, that's not how somebody maybe from another department in your company might know it. So you always have to be patient and you know and know how to talk to people and how to approach people in order to you know to get the work done. So yeah, good. So basically, soft skills. Soft skills, exactly. And yeah, and Dr. Do, you know, Dr. Do, even before your, 
he your hard skills. You can do preaching soft skills, you know, like you make your head full of soft skills. That's all he preaches. Soft skills, yeah. soft skills, and he keeps stressing on it. And they are, it's so important. Soft skills, like it's, it's the game changer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. So what are some of the tools that you use, the cybersecurity tools that you use? Uh, some I've learned, some use tools, some tools, some don't use some tools at all. So what are some of the tools that you use currently at your, um, your position? Yes, so for my GRC, so my, uh, my title is actually GRC specialist. So for my GRC day-to-day -day job, we use uh, Zen GRC. Actually, which, you know, uh, actually, yeah. So with that, I do our risk management. So with risk management, we do risk register. And then number one tool. So basically, I always call it my second wife. Because, you know, I spend most of my time on, on the NGRC when, when I'm at work. And uh, the second tool we use is proof point. So proof point, we use proof point, you know, so for basically for our, so basically since, it's a it's a hospital facility. It's it's a uh, it's a hospital company. We actually always careful on uh, you know PHI. So we actually even have to be in compliance with HIPAA. So we do uh, PHI and PII. So we use Proofpoint. So what so whenever there is data leaving our systems, Proofpoint will if the data contains PHI or PII, Proofpoint will flag it. Right? It will flag it to me, and then I have to go in and then reach out to the person who is trying to send that data out, and you know and make some inquiries. So you have to give me a business reason why we have to send, you know, this information out. So if your business reason is valid, then okay, fine. I'm, I'm going to, you know, give the go ahead and let the, and let the information be released. But if it's not, then I have to like, you know, escalate it. And then we have to do investigation and see why this person was trying to send data when it wasn't, you know, necessary. So we use proof point for that. And also we use proof point uh, to, for front lens activities like phishing. So put, whatever there was in a phishing email, Proofpoint will, will detect it and let us know. And we also use Proofpoint from uh, preventing people from, you know, hooking up their USBs. So, you know, devices, external devices or printing on uh, on our system. So so basically my two main tools are Zen GRC and, uh, and Proofpoint. And on the tools, you know, I just want to stress that, you know, uh, for like, if you are upcoming and you are trying to break into the field, don't be too stuck on the tools, right? So like there, there are just three tools I would say, you know, learn for yourself, which are like tools that nobody's going to teach you, but then you have to learn on your own. So number one is Excel, right? Number one, Excel, uh, Word, and PowerPoint. So those ones, nobody's going to teach you those on the job. So before you, you even, you know, you are trying to apply for jobs or whatever, it, whatever the case might be, make sure you have the basis of these tools. Because guess what? On the job, I know people who lost their job, who lost their job because they couldn't use Excel, right? So of our PowerPoint. So if those are like three fundamental tools you have to know. Forget about all the other tools because all the other tools, once you get on the job, they are going to train you on those, right? When I when I first joined my company, I didn't know how to use Proofpoint. I didn't know how to use NGRC. But guess what? My manager they didn't care. All he wanted to know, can you use Excel? Can you use PowerPoint? Can you use Word? And yes, I was able to. So it made life easier for me. And they were able to train me on uh, the ZGRC tool and of proof point, and now, you know, I won't say I'm, I'm, I'm an expert, but at least I know my way around it, right? So those are the three tools. Always remember, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. Make sure you know those and forget about the rest. The rest, once you get on the job, they're going to teach you those, okay? Great, great. That, that's very true. Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and Word, that almost everybody that we talk to or everywhere that you work, you would definitely use that. So I agree. So you've gotten your job. Uh, skip one of these, some questions, and then I'm going to be asking you these first. Why? You got a good, a good job. Where, what you were doing, uh, your previous job, how was the money as compared to your first job? I believe there was a big difference, right? Oh, huge difference, man. Don't, don't get me started. Huge difference. Okay. Okay, then I'm getting you started here. Yeah. Now, you got that you're probably like on the moon. And then all of a sudden, you have got a nice second job. Man, so, yeah, what, that, what, what brought this? Explain yourself. What made you decide yeah. to get a second job? It's, it's a crazy story because I actually wasn't, you know, planning on getting a second one, honestly, yeah. right? So you know how, I think one of the one of the recent cyber chat we had, okay, it was like, you know, just 
because you always want to be current in uh, you know in this field because it's it's don't be stagnant right it's a food that keeps moving on right so Dr. do was like even though you, you have a job just go ahead and you know just put in an application and start applying and just see your knowledge test your knowledge right on what you're learning from your current job if it's still relevant so i just followed Dr. do's advice and i just put in applications and uh, you know i just got a call for an interview so I mean, after the interview, I was kind of, so after the interview, well, I interviewed with the hiring manager and then uh, the hiring manager's boss, right? So even after the interview, I mean, I thought, you know, I answered all the questions and not, nothing so they had interest in me, right? So the, uh, they, the guy was even like, oh, okay, well, we are just interviewing and once we get the right person, we are going to make an offer. So, we, so and he, he even told me, we are going to let you know, right? So that was it. And then next day, I got on my, I get on my computer around you know 11 a.m. I see an email and this and, and it was like you know there's an offer from us. Would you please please accept? So they gave me like 48 hours to accept, right? So immediately I called Dr. Do. I'm like Dr. Do, like this is what happened. I wasn't even looking for the job, so I didn't even want to take it. So I called Dr. Do. Dr. Do, you know I was messing around. You told us to do, just you know go ahead and apply and mess around a little bit. So I was messing around and then I actually got that offer. So I wasn't going to take it. And Dr. Do was like. No, you should. You, I mean, you should take it. You know, but before you take it, go ahead and you know talk to the to the hiring manager and uh, you know talk about the scheduling and see how you know the job is going to be and see if there's not going to be any conflict or that, right? So, and I was still not convinced, but the dude was like, "No, Michael, you know, just just go ahead. You can do it, right?" Because at the end of the day, this current one you've been doing for like almost eight months now, so I think they're going to be able to you know to manage to manage it. So, so I mean, that's yeah, that's the story. Yeah, so. Wow. That's yeah, so, so, yeah, so honestly, if I didn't call Dr. Do, I wasn't going to take it. Yeah, but wow. luckily I called him and he gave me the Vim and he was like, go ahead and, you know, and do it. Because I was actually just messing around. I wasn't, you know, really looking because I thought I wasn't ready. You know, I've just been in this company for like seven months and Dr. Do was like, no. So sometimes, you know, it's always good to, you know, to talk to the right people. So, wow. yeah. There, there it is. That's, that's, so you were not, were you, were you searching? How was the, the process? Were you all, I mean, how did you, how did this happen? Were you searching? Were you still putting your application in? I just, I just, how yeah, was, so how I just put in process? three, I just put in three applications. I just put mm -hmm. in three applications, you know, just to see if I was going to get a call and then see, you know, just compare what I'm currently doing and see mm -hmm. if it still applies. And funny thing is there was another, so from the, uh, the three application, uh, applications I put in, I actually got a call for two, right? And I did an interview for both. And there was one other company uh, in, uh, in Texas. They were actually even offering way more. But the only thing is they didn't have a cybersecurity program. So basically I had to come in and set, I didn't even talk about to this, right? I had to like come in and set up everything. And that was going to be like a too much of a, you know, of a lift for me. And then I probably, I, I didn't know, I didn't think I was going to be able to manage both my current one and that one in Texas. So I ended up going with the one in Colorado, which was like reasonable. And it was like this actually the same thing I'm currently doing in my like it's the same thing, like no difference. It's just like it's it's just a senior level, right? So like the one I had was uh GRC specialist, and then new one is senior information security analyst, even though they have you know different job titles, I'm actually doing the same things. So wow. like no difference. Okay. Was the interview process was it was it difficult? Was it challenging? So now you've searched, they called you and and was it was it hard? Was it different from the first time that you went through to get your first job, or it was similar, since you were just kind of playing around? To be honest, it was it was easy because, it, you know, it was things I was I've been already doing for like the past eight months. So like, I mean, at an interview, like I was to be honest, I even know I knew more than what you know my my manager because you know. It's something I've been doing, and they didn't actually have somebody who managed the GRC program, right? For them, so like even when I came in, like basically they did have, they did have like a risk management program, but they don't have a risk management, you know, for like uh, basically exceptions for like servers when they are not being. So like I even, I was even you know bringing up like different ideas from my my old one, and my old one actually my manager like he's really good, like he's really actually training me a lot, so I was able to transfer all that knowledge I have over there. To the other interview so i guess they were impressed because most of the things i was even talking about you know that i knew how to do they didn't actually even have it in place at a new place right so i was probably actually going to come in and, and set up and set up 
or those you know those Just, just because it was things I was already doing. So, you know, things I already knew how to do. So, oh, how, do you, how do you manage the two jobs? How, do you, how are you able to combine them? I know you said it's, it's very similar. Um, that is something that I, I personally have thought about it when I always thought about maybe should I go for a second job or not? And then you're thinking maybe a meeting might conflict or maybe um at this particular time you were supposed to be doing that it's how how are you able to combine this uh yeah so for, so for the second one they are both on uh two different time zones right so okay. my first one is in the eastern time zone and the other mm -hmm. one is in the mountain so like they're actually two hours behind right so okay. and moreover the second one i'm a senior uh you know it's a senior level so I actually get to schedule my own meetings for some, like for the most part, so I can, you know, play around it. Uh, so it depends. And uh, uh, I mean, it depends because like the first one, the uh, meetings are already pre-scheduled for me, right? Because I have a manager. But like in the second one, I'm actually basically working on my own, you know, managing my own self. So if I have to like schedule a meeting and I feel like the meeting is going to conflict, then I'm just going to move it to, uh, to a different time that's not going to conflict with the first one. So the second one actually, you know, gives me more leeway because it's more, you know, more something I have to manage on my own compared to the first one where I have to strictly, you know, work with my managers, my managers time. Uh, wow. That's good. That that's that's really good. So um, now you were looking for a job for the first time, you got a job, then the second one you were not really looking, but you still got this job from the beginning where you used to be being a healthcare provider. And then you came up with a plan that you're going to switch. And then you went through the process and then here you are. You made mention of certain things, certain reasons why you decided you wanted to switch the money, uh, family, career growth, and, and all that. Um, do you think you have achieved your goal? Have you gotten there yet? Are you satisfied? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, being able to work from home, you know, I mean, and, uh, you know, I think last week your husband was saying, like, you know, and I think Dr. Luke cut him off, like, you know, like this <laughs> remote work, you can, like, do your work in two hours, you know, for the day, and then, and, you, and, you, and you'll be good. So, I mean, I personally know a guy who's working for jobs, like, you know, for cybersecurity jobs. So, the flexibility is there. So, it's up to you. If you want to spend all your time working and neglect your family, that's up to you. So, the flexibility is there. The money is there. So, yeah. So, I actually, you know, I've actually, yeah, I've achieved those goals. And you guys, you know, can see the flyer, the, uh, the money Dr. Du put on the flyer, right? So the money is there, the flexibility, and uh, the, the career growth. So I started as a cyber, as a GRC specialist, and now uh, the uh, the other one, I'm a senior. You know, uh, it's the senior role. So so the career path, yeah, is is absolutely there. I mean, it, there's there's room for growth. There's always room for growth in uh in cybersecurity. So absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I'll meet you in the back, okay? You keep saying the money is good, the money is good. When you're yeah, done, the money is good. So I, I want to motivate people. You know, sometimes you just have to motivate people to take that first step. So, and the only way to motivate them is telling them how good the money is, how flexible yes. it is, and then yes. how you know the uh, career goes. So, uh, and yes. that's what I keep telling people. It's so many jobs out there, and we all want everybody you know, to get into this thing. Like it's it's crazy. You know. Yes. Uh, Eric, can you mute yourself? Dr. I'm trying to mute him, but I'm working. I think everyone seems to be mute. Okay, sorry. Yes, that's very true. What all that he's saying, yes, is true. And it's amazing. Thank you, Michael. So um, lastly, everybody's here uh, to hear you speak um, for the process. And I'm sure most, most people on here are trying to get to where you are. And that's the reason why they're here. And so um, what is your advice to um, these people? Um, that could have been anywhere else, but chose to be here. 
um, tell them um, what's on your mind in terms of advising and, and encouraging um, our people that this is actually possible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you know, thanks for uh, making it to the to this meeting, and you're actually at the right place. And uh, you know, and if you are, you know, trying to switch your industries, uh, this and you know, and as Doctor Du say, most, most time when we speak, you know, you can always Google stuff and then and then look at what you know, what what are the trends, what what are the fields that are making you know are creating the most jobs and are the most high paying ones. Cybersecurity is is among one of those. So you can just go online and you know do your own research. So don't always take what we say, don't always take for granted, you know, what we say for granted. So, you know, you basically do your own research and then from your research, you can, you know, make your own conclusions. But from what I would say, this is the right field for, you know, for you, if you are trying to switch, it's not easy, you know, and that's that's one thing we have to know. And Dr. Du will tell you as well, it's not easy. It's like you just come in and then, you know, start, you know, just do a little course or do a little studies and then get into a high paying job. And as I said earlier on, it took a lot of sacrifice, right? So I did my course in a, in, in a month. And Dr. Lou, I was actually projecting that that course takes probably between five and six months, but I did it in a month. It took a lot of sacrifice. So you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot of your time, you know, just making sure, you know, if you decide to join uh, the course or whatever course you do, make sure you're going to put your 100% in it. And, uh, and once you get through that, the application process, I mean, it's sometimes I have to like, you know, uh, be talking to people. I did an internship with, like, basically pushing them to apply for jobs. And that's what I always say. It's so many jobs out there, and the money is so good, you know. So, like, there is hope. There is hope. So, if you are here, there is hope. I came from a, a zero IT background and a zero cybersecurity background, and I was I was able to make it. So, I just want to encourage everybody. You know, each of everyone on this call, there is hope. You can go uh, go online yourself and see the amount of jobs. Like even all this, so we currently have one one or five people on the call, right? There's not there's so many jobs. This one or five people, we can we can all be doing like three jobs at a time if we want, and there's still going to be a lot of jobs out there, right? So I just want to encourage everybody. Like the way I did it is possible. I have done it. Other people who joined the course with me or who did the internship, I've made it as well, and we all came, you know, from a, a zero background. So you know, you can see me speaking. I'm an African born, African bred, and I made it. So, you know, encourage yourselves, pick yourselves up wherever you are, you can make it as well. So, you know, never, never back down. And one thing good about our red is that once even once we get through and we get our jobs, we are still here, you know, for whoever is trying to join, uh, who, who for whoever is trying to join this field, we are available and we are always, you know, uh, willing to work you guys, uh, help you guys work through the process and, you know, so you guys can actually reach where, wherever, you know, you are, which might be flexibility, career growth, or the money. So whatever your plan is, you are the right place. And once you join this family, it's a big family. You know, like right now, I'm, I, I, I mean, I could choose not to be on this call, but whenever Dr. Lou, you know, calls me and uh, asks me, I'm always here because I want everybody to enjoy what we, are, some of us are currently enjoying. Because there is so many out, so much money out there, that's not enough for one person, you know, to enjoy. So I just want to encourage everybody, like, you know, just, just make sure when you decide to join, you're going to put your 100% effort in. Because if you join and you don't put any effort in, trust me, it's just going to be like you didn't, you, you never joined because nothing is going to change. So but if you join, you, you decide to join, make sure you are going to put your 100% in. Once you put the effort in, the rest is going to follow. That's for sure. And I can guarantee you that. Put in the 100% effort and the rest is going to follow. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. Um, I said this. Um, I said this last week, and and I want to. What happened? I said this, and I want to repeat. It. And <laughs> oh, Doctor, who found you, Michael? <laughs> you were caught. Oh, okay, yeah. She April fifth, twenty twenty two. Last last year, April. Yeah. You have been mm -hmm. caught on recording, <laughs> guys. This is a proof where Michael started. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. <laughs> Dr. Edu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so ev everything we are saying, is not like, it's not a cooked up story. Like there is nope. proof to back it up. You know? so, nope. uh, this is how Michael yeah, started. You know, this is how it started. No, no prior experience, no background, like zero cybersecurity background, zero IT background. This is how I started, you know. 
Yeah. And these are some of my struggles, <laughs> Dr. Luis putting out there. These are some of my struggles, Dr. Luis putting out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, I'm gonna steal just one minute because I'm lashing somewhere for a meeting. Okay. So I want to say thank you for invite on this uh, platform. I, I was blessed to see Mike Lily in the same team at Ultimus. So how did I know Ultimus myself? I Googled and that click that I was like at work and when I clicked, it gave me Ultimus. I was trying to take cyber security because my work really needs cyber security professionals. So what Mike has said, it's very good for everybody that I see here, one or five people to take serious on it. I have a good job, I'm working, but the skills that I got from ATMS gave me a plus. I travel everywhere. I have put on my certificate in when I send it from ATMS, everybody said, wow, they've been trying to give me a job for incident Lisbon. I said, no, I'm good where I am, but at least I have a plan A and B. So when you take this, uh, this course seriously, when you take ATMS, whatever they have, it's, it's, very, it's very good that I encourage everybody to take advantage of this. This is not a joke. This is a very serious. So thank you very much. I literally joined this kind of platform, but today I don't know how I clicked and then I saw Mike and I saw Dr. Tu. I say, I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. And I'm so blessed for this one minute you gave me, guys. God bless you, Dr. Tu. And God bless you all. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so so you guys you saw the the, the messages that uh, michael was sending right from when he started uh when he was having issues he would send messages and when he was going through the application process he will send messages so he was caught but now you can see uh arithmics i was going to say this that i said this last week and i want to say it again that a Rhythmus platform or the family that has been created is been created for a lot of people with different backgrounds, different backgrounds in terms of cybersecurity. As you can hear, some people may have gotten um, a knowledge from somewhere. They have taken a class somewhere, but they are lacking the hands-on. You can still join at Rhythmus. Somebody may have not had any background at all, like Michael and many of us you can still join at Arithmetic. If you went to even college, but you have gotten to a point where you have graduated, but still cannot find a job because you lack that hands-on, you can still join Arithmetic. Like no matter the level or where you are, that is the family or that is the platform that he has created that everybody can still, no matter what the level you are, he can still pick you up from there and bring you up to where you want to go to. That's what I wanted to say. So thank you, Michael. And thank you so much, everybody. I think, um, Dr. Edu, we can right. probably uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. So uh, still on Michael, I wanted to <laughs> just to play some of the audio. Uh, Michael is uh, <laughs> one of the very active uh, students who be reaching out at 3 a.m. at like any time of the day, just asking about something. So we have like a lot of recording on Michael. I just wanted to play just a few. Uh, I mean, just to give some background, I was trying to just dig a little bit into Michael today and we're able to come up with the screenshots that we got, right? So, uh, the Sheila, you can, uh, once like that is done, it's just going to take like five minutes. We're not going to listen to all of it. There is a whole ton of it. Uh, but uh, if Sheila will go through the questions we have in the chat and then we open yes. the floor for, I know a lot of folks would like to know how Michael is combining both two jobs uh, and like how he's working and how skills from one job is translating to the other and all that. But uh, just to uh, really put Michael on the spot again, we're just going to share this and this is through uh, WhatsApp web. So this is some of the uh, audios that we forwarded from Michael. I think I have to reshare. Uh, if you don't share with the sound, uh, the sound is not going to play. So yes, Michael here. I hope you are. You're... 
Yeah, hello, Doctor Do. Uh, this is Michael here. I hope you are you are doing all right and you are doing fine. So I just wanted to let you know, I got through the entry level course, so I am done with that. I want I want this thing so bad. I've been barely sleeping for the past week, uh, past weeks, and uh, I got through that. So I'm currently working on the cybersecurity job uh, placement assistance. And I had a question for you. So. Since I'm, I'm, I just started working on the cybersecurity job uh, placement assistance uh, course, uh, would it be uh, better for me to go ahead and uh, get this course done whilst I'm working on getting ready for the security plus? Since I, I, I'm probably thinking the security plus questions could help me with uh, maybe you know future interviews or eventually uh, help me when I get uh, any interviews. So. I was just wondering, do you think it's a good strategy for me to go ahead and, uh, you know, just get started with the uh, cybersecurity job placement assistance course while I work on uh, the, while I work on the, you know, the security plus? Uh, thank you, Dr. Edu. Yeah, I just received the, the practice test. And also, yeah, one other question I forgot to ask you earlier is, should I start working on my resume? Is that okay if I just, you know, start uh, working on the resume too? Would that be fine? Yeah, hello, Dr. Edo. Uh, good, good afternoon. So this is Michael here, and uh, I'm just, you know, making this voicemail to let you know I had an, uh, I have an a scheduled appointment for the job. Actually, for the job, I actually asked you the questions about uh, yesterday. So I went ahead and talked to the lady from, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the lady from the HR, and uh, they have me scheduled for an appointment for Friday at 3 p.m. I actually requested Friday so I will have more time, you know, to get ready for the interview, at least with your help. And uh, so, yes, so I've uh, emailed you or actually forward you the details of, uh, you know, the job description and uh, and everything. So, yeah, so I've sent you an email. So, you know, just let me know. And uh, so we can, you know, just. Yeah, hello, Dr. Good morning. Yeah, so I just wanted to let you know uh, the HR uh, lady reached, reached out to me and told me they actually interviewed one other person yesterday and uh, they decided to go with that person. Yeah, so I actually my interview was supposed to be today, but I didn't, I didn't get a chance to do the interview. So they were just letting me know they interviewed one other person. That was yesterday and uh, they decided to go with the other person yeah so i don't know if i should have probably told them i was ready to have the interview on uh, thursday instead of today but then i wasn't ready so and confident enough so, but after talking to you i was ready and confident but unfortunately they said they they gave uh, the job to uh, somebody who interviewed uh, yesterday so hopefully an other opportunities are going to come up and uh, when they come up at least now i have talked to you and i uh, have the confidence and the knowledge on you know on how to you know to to respond uh, to the questions and how to come up with some scenarios so in that case if i if i have some uh, opportunities then i can just go ahead and you know and then schedule the interviews without waiting for too for too long so that's it yeah hello dr do uh, this is mike uh, mike over here and uh, i was I, I had a question for you so uh, for the cyber uh, for the cybersecurity uh, workshop slash internship, for those of us in the level one enrolled in the level one course, do we have to sign up or? Yeah, and sorry, let me just make a quick uh, correction. I know the internship starts on. Uh... Yeah, hello, Dr. Edu. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, reposting uh, this information. Yeah, unfortunately, for some. Yeah, hello, Dr. Edo. Yeah, <clears throat> I hope you are, you are doing well. Yeah, and uh, I want to apologize for uh, disrupting our meeting yesterday. So uh, there is a whole list, right? I uh, think like the audio, we can probably play it all day. Uh, <laughs> you know, like once that uh, Mike is talking about how they moved on with somebody else. And, you know, there is like a whole list of those ones. And ones that is just making general inquiries, and then uh, if I could, like we could just link uh, the actual uh, like WhatsApp you see, uh, like the whole process, you know, by date and by time. Uh, so <laughs> yes, Michael did go through the process. Uh, really, there is no shortcut uh, when it comes okay. to this process, right? Uh, you have to be ready to put in the work, 
and it is going to pay off, right? So at a time when they moved on with somebody else and Michael, they didn't even have one job. Uh, probably he was still, like asking himself, you know, like, is this even possible? Like, will I be able to get there? Now he's there, he has two jobs, right? Somebody else is sitting on the side talking about, can I get to where Michael is? Most definitely you can, uh, if you put in the work, right? And if persistence, right, if you stay with it, just stay with it, don't quit. If Michael, after two, three interviews was like, you know what, you know, I'm just gonna go back to what I'm used to and uh, stay in my comfort zone, he wouldn't be here today, right? Almost half, a, uh, almost a quarter of a million. Uh, I don't think even if you are like a full-blown surgeon with 10 years of experience, uh, you'll be making that money just, you know, uh, just off the bat, right? So uh, that is good money, uh, but it doesn't come easy. You have to put in the work and it's possible. I mean, for, uh, I think somebody was asking about Michael, they didn't even do PCI or anything. It's just normal cybersecurity entry level course, uh, got a job, did the internship, got a job, you know, uh, was playing around because Michael takes some of the things that I take more, that I say more seriously than others. Uh, I keep telling everybody, or even if you have a job already, uh, to stay current in the industry, just interview for just for fun, right? Uh, just interview for fun. Apply for jobs, just do the interviews. If they offer, like if they give you an offer, uh, I think there is, if Kenny is here, uh, Kenny can speak to this. So Kenny did apply for one job. He got the job, right? Did it for a weekend. It's like, mm, I don't think like the job was too demanding. So he just told them, hey, I'm sorry. I I cannot go on with it, right? And they were fine with it, right? So uh, with Michaels, he reached out. Uh, I I told him to reach out back to the hiring manager or like whoever he was talking to, just to not to let him know, hey, this is what you want to do, but to pick his brain on their organizational culture, how many times they have meetings, right? And compare that to what you are doing to like now, right? Don't just pick up or stack up two or three jobs just because you can, because now you'll be running. The last thing you want to do is uh, a company is paying you a hundred plus and you are inefficient in whatever you are doing, right? Uh, morally, uh, for me, it is not right. Uh, integrity wise, it is not right. You have to put in 120%, you know, uh, give them more than they are paying you for and uh, you can sleep at night, right? So you have to make sure if you want to combine jobs, uh, Jobs that are similar, if they are both remote, like Michael's right now in one job, he has a manager. In another job, he's the manager. So he controls his time in that job. So he's more flexible uh, and is very doable, right, in both. So you don't want to pick a job where this company just, they just love meetings. They meet for meeting, just meeting sick. Not to discuss anything, but just to meet and look at everybody's face and smile, right? If you are in such, like such a company, you don't want to also get into another company who loves more meetings than your first company, <laughs> right? Uh, in that instance, then you have a lot of conflict and you are just buying yourself, you know, uh, stress and just pressure, right? So uh, when it comes to combining jobs, uh, you have to make sure that, you know, they are both a good fit, right? So uh, kudos to Michael, uh, within, within a year, almost a year, right? You've been able to pull this off uh, it doesn't come easy. Like Michael was mm -hmm. saying, you know, a lot of sleepless nights. So if you put in the sacrifice, you put in the hard work, uh, your job is waiting for you, right? Finding jobs in this space is like finding a soulmate for life. Uh, there's somebody mm -hmm. there who is yours, you know, who is dying to have you. So there's a company who is dying to have you. Uh, so if you go to one interview and they are like, no, you are not it. Uh, no hard feelings. Just move on to the other one just move on to the other one, right? You get to a company, uh, everybody from the first interview to the last interview, they will still be talking about you, right? Uh, so well done, Michael. Uh, we are going to open the floor, but I think Shila is gonna go through the questions in the chat and then uh, yeah. Michael can take the questions from there. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, um, Fred, Fred wanted, to, uh, wanted you to tell us your position, your title again. Um, so G GRC specialist for one and a senior mm -hmm. information security analyst for the other. Okay, thank you. Um, Robert, Robert wants to know if you have any, if you did have any IT certificate prior to starting 
or after the rhythmic class? Yeah, so for the first uh, for the first job, no, I didn't have any IT uh, certification. But then once I joined the company, I did go ahead and took the security class. And for the second one, they didn't ask me about any certification. So, but I do have security class. Okay, thank you. Linda J wants to know, she said, Michael, at what level of the modules did, uh, did you feel you were getting it or things started to make sense? There, uh, there are 10 modules. Oh, that's that's a good question. <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember, you know, what what was in what model and uh, you know what model. I don't remember the topics in uh, in the more. I mean, it's been it's been a year, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be a, a, a difficult question to answer, yeah, because I can I can't remember or recall what topic was in what model and what was in in which which model. So okay. I'll have to get back to uh, to her on that on that question. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Linda again wants to know, how would you um, rate the, um, the entry level course in terms of difficulty? <laughs> would you say it's very difficult <laughs> somewhat or not at all? Yeah, it's, it's difficult because we are, I mean, if you're coming from a background where you don't have any prior experience, then yes, it's going to be difficult. But from the way it's, uh, it's broken down by Dr. Edo, once you, know, you start from the, from the lesser or from like the less, uh, demanding, uh, you know, models, and then it's going to build you up little by little. So you just, you know, keep building up from model to model. So yeah, but if you, yeah, absolutely. If you come from a, uh, you know, a no background in IT or cybersecurity, then yeah, absolutely, it's, it's difficult. So yeah, it will be. And then Linda again, um, she also wants to know uh, the Excel functions that you use um, in your daily uh, work currently. Yeah, so absolutely. So, you know, knowing how to filter, so duplicating, knowing some of the Excel's formula. So Excel, you know, there is always a shortcut, you know, using the formulas to make your life easier and to make your work, you know, you know, faster. So, and uh, they have like a lot of YouTube, uh, you know, channels that actually have courses on Excel, which are free. So, you know, in your free time, you can always go on, but like, you know, knowing how to filter, knowing how to, you know, create, you know, tables, how to compare graphs, and all that, I would say those are some of the functions you might want to, you know, be able to manage in uh, in Excel. Thank you, um, Frank. Frank wants to know. Uh, so, Dr. Edu also um, that's a training in PCI DSS or emphasis in PCI DSS. Does um, your any of your um, jobs has anything to do with PCI DSS, or do you have any PCI DSS tasks that you perform? Uh, yeah, so I mean, from GRC analysis, so I think, you don't, if Dr. Do my, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, PI, PCI falls under, the GR, falls under GRC, right? But PCI is a, it's a specialization, right? But okay. one thing about our company is PCI, it's, uh, we have a third party actually managing our PCI. So we have, like, we, the internal, the GRC, uh, you know, department, which is just myself and my manager, we are more focused on the HIPAA and the SOX compliance. But PCI is outsourced, so we have a third party that manages our PCI for us. So I don't do anything related to uh, to PCI, but even though PCI is still falls under GRC. Okay, thank you. Audrey wants to know how was the negotiation of your salary? How was it like uh, for each job that you went for? Yeah, so the, you know, so the first one, yeah, I mean, I, it was the first one. So I didn't really stress a lot on the, you know, on the salary. So it wasn't really a lot of back and forth. But on the second one, you know, so on the second one, after I saw that, okay, this, this guy's just come like immediately the day after to offer me the job, it means like they want me so bad, right? So I, I had more, you know, uh, like a leg room to, you know, to negotiate. So I, I made sure, you know, I could get the, the maximum I could get for myself for the second one. But the first one, you know, it was just getting my uh, my, my feet where by still, you know, about six figures. So, you know, hey, you know I mean, it's, it's still great. But the second one, you know, I just made sure I push it, you know, way ahead compared to what the, you know, the, the, initial, the initial offer offer was. Okay, good. Um, Abayomi, Abayomi, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, he was asking the name, um, what is the company and which company so, so the first? I'm wondering if he wants to know what the companies are. I mean, I'm, still working, I'm still working there, so I'm still, I'm still working oh. for both. But the first one is Gentiva, yeah. 
Oh, okay. Gentiva Health, Health Services. Yeah. I don't have any certificate. So, um, do you have any certificate right now, or do they require any certificate um, right now in your position? No, not, none of the jobs require That is from Fred. None of the jobs require certificates, but I do have security plus, which I took after the first, the first job. So the first job in the interview, they didn't ask me about no certifications. My manager says he doesn't care about no certifications. The second one, same thing. They didn't ask me about it. They didn't care about it. So, you know, I mean, if you have a certification, it's, it's good. But for like the second one, the way I was able to speak to the things I was actually doing, actually that's what, you know, I have taken, gave me the job. So they didn't actually wasn't looking at what certification I had and what certification I didn't have. So it was more based on, you know, the fact that I could actually do the work. So. Okay. And Oluyomi is asking, he said, I personally love the idea of two to three jobs, honestly, but I want to find out uh, of working two to three jobs is wrong ethically in cybersecurity or not. So I think he wants to know if it is wrong. I don't Yeah. Think so is. for to that question, I would say if you can find two companies that have no conflicts, so let's say like, okay, if you work for like two uh, healthcare companies that are like uh, a, a competition, with one another, then, you know, in that case, I would say, okay, then maybe that's a conflict, conflict of, of interest, right? Because you can work for two companies that have the same interest. So, but like, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm, I, well, personally, I believe, I don't know if Dr. Duhino you know, will agree or if anybody on the call will agree to that, but if the companies are like in two different industries, then I think that should be fine. If you can be able to manage both, then that's, uh, you know, that's that's okay. So, yeah. Okay. And yeah, um, thanks. Shay. Uh, okay, so, I, like, I also want to add to that. So. Yes, obviously you don't have to work for uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi at the same time. I mean, that is an obvious giveaway, right? But uh, if you are working two jobs, uh, from my, like, if maybe you are working for Adidas or Nike and you are working for Coca-Cola, I mean, they don't really have any conflict of interest, right? They are not chasing the same thing. Uh, but the two jobs, they will stand to benefit. Example, in Michael's case, uh, whatever he has uh, acquired in terms of knowledge and skill here, he's transferring to this company and they are benefiting from it, right? Whatever he's learning from here, he's transferring to that company and they are benefiting, right? But uh, my personal opinion is that you have to make sure you are given 120% in both jobs. So uh, if you want to stack up jobs, you are not stacking them up to do 50%, you know, uh, if you have to do 100%. So if you think you are going to be inefficient, please don't do it, right? Because now you are going to be, your focus is going to be uh, divided. And that is also the reason why you should pick, uh, if you want to do two jobs, pick two jobs that are uh, very similar, right? So if you are a PCI DSS specialist here and you want to be a PCI DSS manager here, like it is very good because it works well for you. Everything that you are doing here applies to that side. So you are not really stretching yourself too thin. And two, don't work for Pepsi and Coca-Cola at the same time. They will kill you <laughs> if they find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sheikh wants to know, uh, do you use two computers for the two jobs? I know some of these tools can take a lot, a lot of space. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. So both uh, provided with their, with their laptops and screens. So yeah, so I have like my office set up at home and then yeah so i have one station for one and one station you know for the other so yeah <laughs> shake's second question is funny he said uh so when you were interviewing for the second job how did you answer the question of why why are you leaving your current job <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's yeah. funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I just told them, you know, my company has decided to go fully uh, on site. It used to be remote during the pandemic, so decided to go, you know, fully, uh, fully on site. And then my son was born during that that period of time, so I enjoy, you know, spending time with my family. So I just wanted to maintain that work life balance, you know, and that flexibility. So that's the answer I gave them. And they were okay with it. So. I think Sheila, Sheila went off. Yeah, uh, that is a good answer, right? I mean, when they ask you, so here you are kind of toying the fine line. You are not necessarily lying and you are not going to tell them I have two jobs already and I want to add yours as a third job, right? Because 
uh, uh, like nobody wants to be the second in anything, right? And uh, mostly for companies, they want your undivided attention, right? So uh, you just have to tell them. So if they ask you, why are you leaving your 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 current job? Uh, what if you have two current jobs and you're leaving one to go pick the other, right? So <laughs> like how you go about that really depends on you. But uh, yeah. my opinion is make sure you'll be able to do both jobs efficiently. Like that is pretty much it. All right, so I'm gonna hand it over back to Sheila. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Yao said, uh, can you please share that? Oh yeah, uh, Doctor, can we put the link of Arithmix in? Um, he says, well, can you share the link to join uh, Arithmix WhatsApp group? Yao wants that. Yeah, so that will be posted uh, as we are moving forward. Uh, so we have a WhatsApp group where uh, we post cyber security stuff on there. Uh, it's a pretty quiet and uh, loud group when it comes to cyber security. Uh, so we only entertain cyber security or uh, IT related stuff on there. The link will be posted so you can join uh, and be part of the family. Thank you. Um... Jermaine is asking, information security analyst and IT security analyst, what is the difference? <laughs> I mean, I'm, probably that's that would be a question for uh, Dr. Edu, but I'm, I'm thinking it's probably the same thing, Dr. Edu, but I'm not sure if Dr. Edu agrees with uh, with my with my answer, but, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm a cybersecurity cyber person and I'm more, I know what my role entails, but I don't know if IT, you know, security analyst is the same as uh, information security security analyst, but I'm, I'm assuming they probably do the same, you know, the same, they have the same job uh, job description, but I'm not sure if Dr. Do wants to come in into this one. Yeah, so mostly uh, is wording. I mean, they are all separate. Like when we look at it academically, they are separate things, but uh, bad habit, we've, we, we kind of interchange all of it. So example, uh, IT uh, information security, we kind of interchange that with cyber security, but it's not really the same thing, right? But they kind of are in the same family. Uh, IT security will cover everything IT, not just information, right? So, but we are we are we find ourselves in the bad habit of saying, you know, information security is equal to IT security is equal to cyber security, right? So uh, they are all separate. So when we talk about IT, everything included, everything inclusive, right? Information security, yes, will focus on uh, information and information systems. Cyber will focus on everything within the cyberspace, right? So uh, if you look at it kind of on uh, like hierarchy, uh, IT security will be higher, followed by information security, followed by cyber security. But bad practice, we kind of uh, put one for the other, right? So. But when it comes to job descriptions, uh, information security and IT security, they kind of will interchange them. Uh, you are pretty much probably going to be doing the same thing within those job titles. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yaboa Audrey, um, you said, do you leverage your computers, uh, your company's policy template in policy development? Or do you uh, review, or have, um, or you have to create a template your own? Yeah. So currently, my company we actually do have. They already had, you know, their policies in place before I joined. So for now, on the policies, what I do is I just review it, and you know, and then reach out to you know. So like you know, the policies we have the technical parts of the policies. So like the technical aspect, I have to reach out to whoever is in the company who actually you know. Is the owner of those, you know, of those technical parts. So then maybe reach out to them. Maybe like, let's say encryption, we do have people, folks in the company who are like the experts in encryption. So just make sure the policy is up to date and is current and relevant, right? So then I don't have to like create policies from scratch. So I do review the policies. I do, uh, I do edit them and then just make sure they are relevant and then they have the right stuff in it and then, you know, submit it for approval. And so in that case, when I submit it, my manager and then the CISO have to, approve it. And once they approve it, it becomes, you know, the policy for the company. So yeah, so to do his question, I don't have to create policies from scratch because we, we already have those policies in place. 
All I do is just edit and then add stuffs or take stuffs out. That's all I do in the policies. Okay. Okay. Jamel is asking if you're able to do both jobs efficiently in 40 hours a week. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. as I said, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Even though they have like two different uh, job titles, it's actually the same thing. Like when you compare the job descriptions, I'm doing the same thing. The only difference is one has a set of tools and the other has like, you know, a, a, another different set of tools. So that's okay. the difference, but everything is 100% the same. Okay. And Alan wants to know, uh, what, what was um, your biggest challenge at the first job? Uh, my biggest challenge, uh, so, you know, uh, you know, normally I would probably say lack initially was the lack of courage because you are scared, right? It's not something you've, you've ever done before, but then you, it's something you have, you have to get that hump, right? It's something you have to get over. So I, initially I would say probably I was a little bit intimidated, right? Because when, when I get in the company, you, we talk, you, you see some people in some positions and you think like, oh man, like, let me just keep quiet and let, let me not speak, right? Because maybe I don't think I know enough, right? But then once they start opening their mouth and they start speaking, you're like, oh man, Dr. Du has given me so much. I even think I know more than these people, right? So initially it was the fear of, you know, not, not knowing, you know, not, not having the knowledge to be in that position. But then once, you know, you start talking to people from the training you get from arithmetic, you know, oh man, like this training actually prepares you, you know, to be able to face whatever is, is coming your way. At least it gives you the basis and it prepares you. So then later you have to do your own work and prepare yourself and keep you know studying and updating yourself and as i said earlier don't stay stagnant you know just keep moving and just keep learning okay thank you uh by the question and where did it go okay yeah he was asking about the internet internet service providers so using uh the same internet he said do you use separate internet service provider for the companies or are you using the same internet service provider that you have at home for both companies and are they not going to find out since you're using the same network uh to work for two companies i'm not sure i mean i don't know that's that's a technical question i don't think there is a way i mean the probably could do has to answer this but i'm not sure they can get on my personal you know home uh network to see you know what my traffic is i don't think they have that that ability mm -hmm. but i think Dr. Lou probably is the first person to to answer this question. Yes, use, so. Just use a VPN. Well, so, okay, so let me say, uh, my work, actually, they both have VPNs, right? So like, one one work computer has a VPN, so I have to log on that VPN in order to use the computer, and the other one has a VPN as well. So I don't I don't think there's there's a way for them to get on my network, you know, to, to find out, so. Question is answered. Right, Dr. Du? Yeah, it's so uh, I don't think like that is even uh, a problem, right? Uh, internet is internet. So mm -hmm. regardless, I don't think like any, uh, both companies bought their own routers or they gave you an, an internet service provider to use, right? Yeah. So they expect you to use your own internet at home. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think that should be a problem. The only problem will be if you don't have enough bandwidth and your internet is very slow, then you're going to be inefficient uh, mm -hmm. at work. But if you have very like really fast uh, or decently fast internet you, you should be good right there shouldn't that uh, internet shouldn't be uh, of any conflict of any sort okay um kenny hi kenny kenny wants to um know was there a difference in the um, um okay so let me read it he says thank you for your testimony mike um, in the jobs that you got your offer, was there a difference in the flow of conversation with the interviewer than the jobs you did not get an offer for? Also, was there a big difference in the question that, that you were asked for the job you got offered uh, compared to the ones you did not get um, the offer? And did you uh, fill the interviews you got the job for offered. He says what? And did Man, you that's, feel that's, that's, interviewed? A, that's a long question. We might have that's to a long question. Me. Okay, start from the top. Start. Take your time. First, he wants okay. to know if there was a difference between the one that you didn't get the offer and then the one that you actually got an offer. Was there a big difference in the questions? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, no, not, not per se, because I was, you know, so 
I know Dr. Du will say, you know, just apply for you know any cybersecurity or information security jobs out there. But I actually, you know, wanted to put something towards more the GRC expert. So I was I was applying more for GRC jobs. So like the interviews were more about the same. I don't really GRC, you know, is almost the same, you know, in every company. There's not really that much uh, that much difference. So so like from interview from interview, there wasn't that big difference from interview from interview. Yeah. Okay. And then he's wondering, so the one that you actually got a job offer, the offer, did you uh, feel like during the interview, you were more confident um, uh, to be able, you were confident, um, and that is probably why you got the job in terms of your uh, security knowledge base uh, on the search um, experience? Yeah, so for the first one, actually, after my manager hired me, he told me like the difference what he liked about me was the passion, you know, I had when speaking about, you know, uh, like uh, the job. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I said that, that was a difference. So that, that was the passion I showed. On the second one, it was just, it was just the knowledge, you know, because as it's something I've been doing for the past eight months. So, you know, and I, I actually was, was explaining to them and I was even actually explaining to them how I could help, you know, improve, you know, their risk management program by transferring what I've learned from the, from the previous one to, you know, to the new place. So that, I think that's what, makes uh, made a difference in the in the second one thank you angel is asking about tax so now you're in a different tax bracket so he's wondering how uh, you are setting up your yearly income tax are you able to have the company hire you if you create your um company to have tax advantage hmm. uh so I'm lucky my wife is an accountant by profession. So I, I nice. leave all the taxi stuff to her. So I don't, have, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Amazing. She's an accountant and finance person. So, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. It says, uh, what was your average duration of, the, uh, of each year, of each of your in, uh, interviews? Oh, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it. for the first. The, the first one, the interview was about 30 minutes with the hiring manager. And then, uh, you know, and that was it. So I had a first interview for 30 minutes for the hiring manager. And then he told me, well, he liked me so much. So he wanted me to schedule right away and speak to his manager because at the end of the day, his manager was the one who was going to make the decision. So they scheduled me the following day with the manager. And it was about like probably 15 minutes, just soft skills question. Because, you know, he's a, he's a project manager. So he doesn't have the, the tech, you know, the technical knowledge about you know information security and cyber security so it was just you know picking my brains on how i'm going to re react to some some conditions you know it was just going you know it, like not personal questions but like the personal skills uh like the soft skills let me say yeah so it was like you know everything about soft skills and that lasted for like 15 minutes the day after uh, i spoke to my hiring manager and then after that interview with the with the hiring manager <laughs> excuse me like i think 10 minutes or whatever the recruiter called me back and told me you know hey they wanted to join the team so that was the for the first one for the for the second one actually uh when i the interview lasted for about like an hour and then after the interview the the manager and the manager's manager were like normally they do interviews and uh it doesn't even take like 30 minutes you know after 30 minutes they're ready to get them. but like with me they were just talking and talking we we're just talking and talking because as i said earlier most of the things i already did those are things i've been doing right so I was able to like to speak to it, giving like multiple examples, telling them how I could help their program. So we talked even like over an hour, uh, basically. And he was surprised. He was like, this was actually his first time where he had like an interview where it lasted like over an hour. So yeah. So like the first uh, work, it was 40, uh, about 30 minutes and then 15 minutes. The second, uh, the second job was just one interview. After the one interview, they just, you know, gave me the offer. So. Great. Great. Um, there was, uh, I think it was Brian. Brian um, had his hands up for so long. I'm so sorry. Are you okay. Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? please go ahead. Yeah, I yes. can hear you, Brian. Um, Mike, you mentioned something about uh, SOC compliance, and I think you were saying the SOX, and sorry about that, my GPS went off. Um, but isn't, is it true that you have to have your CPA to do the SOX uh, compliance or are you just helping with the compliance and someone else is a CPA that's there? Yes, so you as a GRC specialist, you are, you are not in charge. So basically we do have an internal auditor and the internal auditor is a CPA. So my role basically, so my role with the SOX, uh, 
uh, I have two roles, right? So number one, I'm the person in charge of designing uh, the control, the IT control for that, uh, well, designing the control. And I do that through our GRC too, which, was, which is the GRC. So I design the control and then we have three roles, right? We have the assignee, we have the internal, uh, the reviewer, which is the internal auditor, and then we have the verifier, right? So my role is the person who actually creates the IT control, and then I'm the verifier. So when I create the control, the, uh, the, the IT person, you know, it could be an IT engineer or like, you know, a service security engineer, whoever it is, is a person who has to upload uh, the, the evidence, right? That shows that that control is being in place. So that person is the assignee, and then we have the reviewer, which is the, which is actually the auditor. And yes, he has to have a, uh, a CPA for SOC. So he does have a CPA for that. And my role as the general analyst is the verifier. So I come in. So basically, I have to make sure that signee provided the evidence for that control, and that the audit actually went in and control uh, and control uh, what the assignee did, and to make sure, like you know, the control is actually in place and it's actually doing what it's meant, you know, it's meant to do. So then once I verify all those steps, I'm the person who actually close, uh, closes that IT control and then gives the okay in the in the GRC tool just to you know, let people know, yeah, this IT control is basically doing what it's uh, it's supposed to do. Yeah, so for SOX, you definitely need an auditor and the auditor has to be a CPA uh, certified. Thank I'm you. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Brian. Um, uh, Malachi, Malachi uh, is asking, so to stay current in your field, how much time do you invest uh, to study and research? And, or, and, oh, or man. Research? So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good question. That's why I always say, you know, arithmetic, arithmetic is, is uh, the right place you want to be because every Friday we have our cyber chance, right? So, from because like most places, well, as I said earlier, you take the course and it's over, right? Once you take your course, you are done. There is no cyber chat. There is no meeting. I mean, you're on your own. Go find a job and do whatever you want to do with your life, yeah. right? But like, whenever Dr. Do has his cyber chat on Fridays, I'm always on, even though, you know, and I mean, I probably can say, no, I don't want to attend, but yeah, I don't care. Even if I have one or two or three jobs, I still make sure, you know, I attend the meeting. So I learned a lot from that. I will, I always make sure, you know, I watch Dr. Do's videos uh, on YouTube and also watch, you know, some good quality cybersecurity videos and also try to read a lot and, uh, you know, online and stay current. And we have like some good cybersecurity magazines and on our website or podcasts online sometimes on my free, you know, time I try to listen to just to, to stay current in the field, you know. And that's one thing you always want to, uh, you know, keep moving on, stay stagnant, always, you know, keep moving and keep trying to update yourself, you know, to the current uh, state of things. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's very true. Um, and then um, he, he, his second question was, um, he says, do either of your companies put pressure on you to stay current uh, in your current field? If no, so, absolutely. How absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely not. No, that's something I, I, you know, I, take, I take on my own because I know where, you know, where I want to be. So, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, because one day, you know, we always, you know, trying to get there, whether it's the executive level, whatever it is, you know, you always have to put uh, the work in. So nobody puts pressure on me. But it's just up to me, you know, to update myself and you know make sure I'm keeping myself current with the with the current trends. So yeah. Um, Angel, Angel is asking, how are you setting um, up your? Oh. No, I think. Hold on a Was minute. Ask question again. Yeah, I think I think we we talked about that one already, Jeff Brian. All right, and then. How do you manage family responsibility in your two jobs? <laughs> yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's flexible. So I work Monday through Friday remotely for both. And uh, so how do I, so like on the weekends, I don't have to like stress myself. I just make sure all my work, you know, for both are done during the week. So that way I have my, uh, the weekends to spend with my family, you know, more or less my wife works during the week as well. And my son is, is at a daycare during the week. So it's not like there's like any family time. But like everything I have to do before my son gets back from school or my wife's, you know, is done with the work, I make sure everything is done, you know, within my working hours. So now I have like the evening to spend with my family and then I have my weekends off. Unless sometimes I want to be a little lazy during the week, then I can always, you know, catch up on the weekends. So, you know, it's it's up to you. At the end of the day, Dr. Du said, uh, you know, big boy, big girl pants, or, you know, so it, it's up to you. You can, you know, uh, manage your schedule accordingly to you know to fit 
your the, uh, your family's needs. So it's, it's up to you. So once you get a remote a full remote job, it's, it's up to you. They don't. They're not going to stress. They're not going to tell you. You know, you have to work these hours to these hours. Nobody cares. You know. Sometimes after my sons go to bed, uh, I'm around eight thirty. I'll just you know get back on my computer and then make sure I catch up with some things, uh, some assignments. So it's up to you. There's not and uh, you know a, a predetermined hours you have to work. It's, you just work around your, your schedule to fit. Your just make sure the work is done. That's all. Just make sure the work is done. Okay. Uh, Brian, um, do you have another question? I see your hand is up again. Yes. Yes. Okay, absolutely. go ahead, please. Um, really a statement. I was going to say, yes, it sounds amazing to have two jobs. I just want to talk to everyone on here, and it's great. But just to give you examples, two jobs that you wouldn't have, you wouldn't want to have two jobs in the field of being like a cybersecurity analyst. And the reason I say that is because your, your eyes have to be on that screen constantly. And when you get an alert, you have to be on your feet of what you do with that alert, what you do with that um, incident that came in. So you wouldn't be, usually you wouldn't be able to focus on uh, two jobs doing like cybersecurity analysts. Now, when you're talking about GRC, or if you're talking about risk management, those are like a commercial break that maybe you can get two jobs to do that because your, your eyes are not always on the screen constantly on those because you're more dealing with uh, sometimes just projects like they'll just give you a project to work on that can you know probably get to your other job. But if you're like an analyst for doing just like cybersecurity analysts and you're getting like uh, reports and incidents like let's just say you're using like a, a a sim or a splunk or something like that your eyes have to be constantly on that screen taking care of those, those alerts so uh yes it sounds good to have two jobs but you have to make sure that whatever field you're in just like dr dewitt said you have to give 120 percent or more yeah and Brian, yeah Brian, uh, yeah brand makes uh, a perfect point that's the reason why i I went more towards GRC, right? It's more project based. It's more flexible. You don't have to constantly be on your screen. So yeah, so that's that's a good point. Great point. Right. Thank you. Um, I think um, I think you said this before, but Robert is asking: Are the jobs out of state or in state? Uh, so one is in state. So I'm actually uh, in, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. So my first one is in Atlanta. Your headquarters is, is in Atlanta, Georgia, but it's fully remote. So like. My managers, my manager is like in Indiana. Our CISO is somewhere else, like in a different state. So, you know, yeah. And the second one is out of state, yeah. Okay. And uh, Robert is asking, like, no, uh, Christabel. Christabel was asking, uh, did you do self-studies on the GLC after the cyber uh, security class with Dr. Eden? Uh, and that's what I was saying earlier. So the GLC actually is covered in the, in the so whatever you do in the internship, right, force on the GRC. So I didn't have to do no self-study, like nothing. Whatever helped me get that job was all the training courses I took to arrange me. So entry-level course and then the internship. So the internship, GRC, and as I said earlier, you know, you do risk management, you do policies, third-party risk management. So yeah, so all our things, which I, all our things I did actually in the internship course. So I didn't have to do any self-study. Okay, okay. And Robert is asking, what is your highest level of education? Do you have any college degree? If so, what program? Yes, so I do, I do, have, a, I do have a bachelor's in biology and I have a master's in healthcare administration. Okay, okay. Yeah, but mind you, uh, for, like for both jobs, nobody asked me about any degrees. So they didn't really care if I had a degree or not. They didn't ask me about no degrees or no certifications, you know. So just let me know whether you have a college degree or not. Don't let that be your limitation, right? Like this field, it's so many jobs out there. They just want to make sure you guys, you know, you have the fundamentals and the skills to be able to do the job. Nobody's going to care if you have a college degree or you have, you know, whatever you have. I mean, just just have the fundamentals and the basis. So, okay, thank you. And uh, Jonathan is asking, how did you know about jobs? How did you know what jobs to apply for with no experience or certificate? And that's why I always go back to, to arithmetic, right? Arithmetic is going to help you, it's going to walk you through the process. So from like the, from the entry-level course to the internship, I understood the area 
to go towards was uh, GI that you know the training I got from the resumes and then do the internship. And I actually did enjoy you know the internship. So after the internship, I, I told myself, yeah, not what during the internship, I told myself this is what I actually want to do. So I wanted to go towards more the GRC. So I wasn't interested in being a cybersecurity engineer or cybersecurity analyst or anything. All I wanted to do was just something that's risk management. So something GRC. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um okay. how did you okay? It says, thank you for the response. Okay, Christabel. Uh, Vincent, is there another way to reach Dr. Edu? Because those of us in the PCI class uh, do not get the kind of um, mentorship, which perhaps is the most important part of the program. We sent emails and texts, uh, set um, appointment and never get a response. Dr. Edu, this is for you, an attack. <laughs> uh, so what I'll say is I don't know what Vincent is talking about because I've spoken to Vincent a couple of times so I, I'm, I'm really kind of lost uh, if anybody else in the PCI class wants to maybe if they are experiencing the same thing uh, but on the website uh, on a more serious note on the website uh, you can always make an appointment to do Zoom one-on-one -on -one, uh, with me Right. So uh, if you make an appointment and you are like, hey, Dr. Edu, can we talk at 2 p.m.? You just send an email like that. And that is really not an appointment. Right. Uh, if you go to our calendar and you choose a time and date, uh, we will get to you uh, when it's time for us to talk. Right. So uh, it's not just on the fly when you feel like when you feel like talking, uh, you just reach out and everything up to season and we talk to you. It doesn't work that way, uh, unfortunately. So with like the back and forth with Michael that you saw, uh, for mentorship, uh, everybody gets mentorship, but if you don't ask for it, uh, we do the general kind of mentorship in class. Uh, but if once you are done and with Vincent, uh, he just started a course, right? So some people, when they are, let's say maybe uh, two weeks into the course, they want to start applying for jobs and they want like your full undivided attention job placement is at the end of the training right so if we do a courtesy of helping you with resumes and stuff like when you are like three weeks into it don't you are not there yet so we can choose to not to do anything on job placement until you are done with the course frankly right but we take that time out of our time to cater for that but job placement is supposed to be a collective thing that we do for the whole entire group right and then one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh when it comes to that but uh if you really want to speak to Dr. Edu one on one. I mean, on the website is there. You can make an appointment all day. Uh, choose the time and date that best suits you. That best suits us on the calendar, and we will be able to talk to you, right? So, uh, not just maybe uh, sending a text message and saying let's talk at three p.m. It doesn't really work that way, right? So maybe that is what Vincent is talking about. Uh, either than that, maybe probably he can clarify uh, with more specifics. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Jasmine. Jasmine is asking, is GRC and risk management the same thing? If not, what difference do they have? Yeah, risk management falls, falls under GRC. Yeah, so risk risk management, you know, so risk management is everything related to risk for the company. So under risk, uh, risk management, we have third party risk management. So basically, you know, making sure uh, if you have an, an onboarding uh, vendor coming on board, right, you just have to make sure their security program is actually in place. And then just making sure you can, you, their security uh, posture meets the standards of your company. So third party risk management force under risk management, risk register force under mm -hmm. risk management, policy exceptions, you know, policy exceptions, vulnerability exceptions, all those force under risk management. And risk management as a whole is under GRC. So for cybersecurity, for a company, GRC is in charge of risk management okay okay i think that's all the questions we have in the chat um if anybody um have any more questions uh, um you can let us know but dr do that's all the questions i have in the chat i think well, isaac can i question. just add something yes please go ahead isaac Hello, everyone. Um, Michael, thank you so much for your 
for your submission. And uh, you mentioned something that, you know, that reminded me the position that uh, the job and every day the learning experience you can never you can never know what you're going to learn and this evening i've definitely learned a lot from you michael um so i'm all about networking and can i have you can, can we have uh, your linkedin you know and we connect because i'm in the same predicament i'm on the east coast and i've been trying to find a second gig on pst mountain time or even you know on the west coast but not yet because as uh, someone mentioned, was it Brian? I'm a cybersecurity analyst, always on the, on the screens. It's pretty difficult trying to get another gig where I have to look at four other screens. So anyway, um, if we can just connect and we talk more. Yeah, absolutely. You can absolutely. advise me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll leave my number in the chat. So, you know, whoever feels they need to reach out, you can always reach out. You know, I'm always available. So, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. Thank you, Isaac. And um, thank you, Michael. Yes, you promised that. So please uh, put it in the chart. Because, yeah. um, Jason, oh, yeah. uh, Jason, sorry, is also asking how they want to get in contact with you. Uh, I'm watching live here, yeah, you too. Uh, Leonard, Leonard said he's watching live in YouTube, and I posted a question there. Huh. Dr. Edu, are you able to see a question in YouTube? I'm not able to see that. Yeah, oh, okay. so... Uh, you want to post a question here? Oh. Yeah, we're looking at some of the questions, but uh, for some reason, they keep disappearing. Uh, yes, he's asking how many years of experience did you mentioned you uh, did you mention during your interview and then also uh yeah i think that was it and uh nana Puku on here was asking what is your uh, name on linkedin so you can put your linkedin up so they want your name on linkedin that way they can look you up and link up so uh for your interview how many years of uh, in, uh experience did they ask you for your years of experience that is what leon is asking So unfortunately, I don't have a little account to share. Um, I think I think that's all. Shall I your mute? Mute. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Kids were screaming. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Jermaine, I think Jermaine has a question. Um, if you can go ahead, please. Um, hello, everyone. It's not actually a question. Uh, somebody asked a question about uh, um, SOX or compliance audit. And somebody in the group was saying you really need to have a CPA. I just want to say that uh, if you are internal auditor, because my brother is internal auditor and most of his job is around SOX compliant audit. And he just um, has a CISA certificate. Um, so you don't actually need to be a CPA. Uh, as far as I know for internal auditor, I mean, you are there to make sure that everything is in place before an external auditor from those uh, big four, they came in and, you know, um, complete their job. So uh, you don't actually need a CPA to be able to be an internal auditor, to be able to, com 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 um, uh, to perform IT general, no IT general, to be able to perform SOX compliance audit. I just want to add that to that. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, real quick, uh, Jermaine, are we talking about uh, SOX or SOC? Yes, SOX, Sanban Ops. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Shala, you can go ahead. Okay, Kevin, I think, uh, Jermaine, you are done, right? Kevin? You can go ahead and speak, please. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. No, thank you, um, Sheila. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And uh, thank, uh, and I want to thank uh, Dr. Edu too for bringing uh, Michael Yebua on. Yeah, I also uh, took part in the cybersecurity course, and uh, yeah, some of us are still uh, on the job hunting. So I just wanted to like uh, quickly ask uh, Michael, you know, which uh, websites did he actually go to to apply for this uh, this job? I mean the GRC jobs. I don't know if he went to LinkedIn or Indeed or where. You know, if he can uh, let some of us know which websites or where to go to specifically to apply for some of these jobs. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. So for, for both, mainly I used Indeed. Yeah, that's all I used, mainly Indeed. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'll, I'll personally call uh, Michael and talk to you. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. All right, uh, so we are about to wrap it up. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, we are almost at nine, uh, so two hours into this. Uh, appreciate your time and your insights, Michael. Uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do these uh, sessions just to uh, walk people through the whole entire process. And also even for those who are uh, working on the job, like Isaac, For uh, Isaac just asked the question. Uh, this is Isaac's second gig but he went out of the first job and then he has a second job. So uh, everybody, there is something for everybody to learn from, right? That is why we do this. And then also to, as a form of encouragement, uh, to help encourage everybody. Uh, Kevin was in the same intention group with Michael, right? Uh, Kevin is still looking for a job. Michael has two jobs, yes, I am. right? So, <laughs> I mean, they can always link up, you know, at least get some, a uh, few pointers from him and then also to let you know that if uh, Michael did it uh, is very doable but uh, yes. for like Kevin I'm gonna ask, just put him on the spot how many jobs did you apply for last week Kevin Two jobs uh, last week, this week. I was mm -hmm. averaging 20 a day. Oh. Yeah, so, Isaac was doing 20 a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a game of numbers, right? So for everybody uh, who thinks it's taking too long for them to get a job, uh, I can tell you uh, for a fact, it's a game of numbers. So the more jobs you apply for, the more interviews you get, the closer you are to landing your uh, first or second or third cybersecurity job, right? So uh, sometimes people will talk to Bitali, it's so hard to get a job in this industry. You ask them, how many jobs did you apply for last week? And they start smiling, uh, like uh, one, you know, two, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so for anybody on here who, uh, got a job, uh, unless maybe probably with the exception of Sheila, everybody did like uh, 30 applications in a week, right? And out of that, at least you are guaranteed five interviews. And out of the five, if you do five interviews for a month, you're going to get a job, at least one out of it, right? So uh, just for everybody, just keep pushing. Uh, in the job placement assistant a portion of the training, we show you the tricks of, you know, applying for even like 20 jobs within like uh, less than 10 minutes, right? So it's not like you have to spend your whole day applying for jobs. Uh, there are ways around it, right? So 
Uh, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this uh, Friday night. And uh, before we wrap up, okay, go ahead, Sheila. Um, there was somebody that was asking when is the next internship starting? Oh, it's going to be starting in June. Right, okay. yeah, in June, yes. That's so uh, thank you, Sheila. I always uh, a great co-pilot. Uh, thank you, Sheila. Michael, I really appreciate your time and uh, congratulations once again uh, to mm -hmm. making all of us proud and making your family proud. And you are a testament to uh, putting in the hard work and uh, it's, it's definitely going to pay off, right? Uh, even if it's not paying off uh, as soon as you want it to, eventually it is going to pay off. And uh, I'm always big when it comes to this, uh, build a stronger foundation. Michael is able to combine two jobs. Uh, so don't be in a hurry to just combine two jobs. Be in a hurry to build a stronger foundation uh, in whatever you are doing. That way, when you are ready to add on to two jobs, three jobs, uh, it's not going to be much of an issue, right? For Michael, it's not much of an issue because he's actually built a very strong foundation. If you don't, and you are, uh, like we were saying in the army, half ass in it, and you know you are lucky to get two jobs, uh, then you are going to be part of the group that are getting paid 200 and something to uh, get high blood pressure, right? Uh, you don't want to be that person getting paid to get sick because you are being stressed out. And you know now you are going to get a very, uh, easy, not easy per se, but, you know, very uh, good money and, you know, flexible job and you find yourself being more stressed than what you used to do. So uh, take the time to build a stronger foundation. And that is my advice for everybody. And the rest, the sky is going to be your starting point. So I appreciate everybody's time. We are going to meet again next week uh, for Cyber Chat. And for uh, our interns, we are not meeting tomorrow because the projects you are working on is taking a bit longer than uh, we anticipated. But for all other courses, uh, we are meeting again next week, God willing. So uh, the recording is also going to be sent out uh, early tomorrow morning. And uh, everybody knows where to find me or Arithmus uh, in general. So I appreciate everybody's time. We meet again next week, Friday. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I appreciate you. your time. And my, uh, Sheila, uh, always a pleasure having you as a co-pilot. So we are wrapping up. Uh, have a great rest of the weekend and uh, a great week next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Duke. Thank, thank, thank you, Michael. Thank you, thank you, Michael. you. Thank you Dr. Duke. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, Doc. Good night. Thank you, Doc. Good night.